Welcome filmmakers, teachers, students, friends, and family members to the 21st annual BC Student Film Festival. I'm excited that our festival returns after a year's pause at a time when the COVID-19 pandemic continues to affect us locally and globally. At a time when travel remains a challenge, cinema offers us a lens to continue to explore different cultures and thought, inspiring us emotionally, socially, and spiritually. This year's films, although fewer in numbers, are outstanding in quality, especially considering the limitations student filmmakers faced in the production of their films. I want to take a moment to thank our judging panel, all of whom are Simon Fraser film students. Your creative and technical insight, commitment to excellence, and thoughtful, caring nature has made this particular year one of the best for the adjudication process I've ever seen. Also, I want to thank all the teachers and filmmakers for your continued support for the festival. Thank you so much. One more thank you to the festival committee, a small group of dedicated individuals who I've depended on so much. Thank you, Bill, Chris, and Kyle, for your continued help putting on the BC Student Film Festival. Our format tonight is different in so many obvious ways, but I'm really excited to announce one very big change. Many of the winning films will be announced by a member of our judging panel. Through their enthusiastic voices, you'll hear firsthand of what they thought of your films. And now on with the nominations and awards. The nominations for Best Junior PSA are... One thing to play is hide and seek Out in the sun with you and me See cat, there's many things we can do Playing at home We all do our duty The virus can't get him, her, you or me You can count on me Like one, two, three Because we can and I know when I need it, I... The award goes to Stay at Home by Christine Gao and Kitty He. Well done, Christine Gao and Kitty He. Our judging panel all commented on your wonderful use of color, original song, and a really fun approach to an important message. Congratulations to you both. Bye! Can't wait to see my friends at school! Wait a minute. Before you go to school, it's important to do a quick self-check for any symptoms of COVID-19. Huh? How do you do that? It's simple. Just follow along. If you have a sore throat, a runny nose, or if you're coughing, <coughs> be careful. Just stay at home. If you can't taste the smell and like your head is that make you dizzy Whoa, I'm Take dizzy. a break, it won't hurt you But we all do our duty The virus can't get him, her, you or me You can count on me Like one, two, three Because we can I know when I need it, I can count on you. Like four, four, three, three two, 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 do your share. Cause that's what keeps us safe and sound, oh yeah. Ooh, 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 yeah, yeah. I think I should stay home today. How about you? The nominations for Best Senior Promotional, PSA, and Lifestyle are... I wear a mask because I want to keep myself and others safe because I want to lower the risk of being exposed to COVID-19. Participate in future events again. So that we can resume normal activities soon. Because it's about putting others before yourself. 
I want to protect my little cousin who has a rare disease and a low immune system. To protect my mom. My friend. The award goes to Flatten the Curve by Ravi Manab, Justin Cormandy, and Ryan Christopher Lita. Well done, Ravi Manab, Justin Cormandy, and Rian Christopher Lita. The judging panel commented on the excellence in cinematography, choice of music, and pace in your very impactful film. Great job. The award for Best Junior Music Video goes to Thinking About the Past by Kyan Miller and Kerwin Mock. Excellent film, Kian Miller and Kerwin Mock. The judging panel commented on how, on how catchy your tune was and also the strength of your editing. Great job. Lately I seen everybody consumed by socials and stunning Gotta keep it 100, the days pass by like it's nothing Cause you gotta stay humble and stay inside of your bubble Stop talking about the past cause it ain't coming back Stop talking about the old me, he ain't coming back Yeah they talk behind my back, but I see through it like glass all that stuff was in the past Time to move on, make it fast And get to running on that track Speeding on that track Like a track star, run it back Trying to make my own wave Originality and fame Lately I seen everybody Consumed by socials and stunning Gotta keep it 100 The days pass by like it's nothing Cause you gotta stay humble And stay inside of that bubble Stop talking about the past, cause it ain't coming back. Talking about the old me, he ain't coming back. Yeah, they talk behind my back. Couple snakes up in the grass. Time to move on from those people, we gon' leave them in the past. Uh. The nominations for Best Senior Music Video are It's late and I'm feeling lonely This life I follow slowly The award goes to Edge of Sanity by Jarena Lee, Annette Shine, and Emma Lawson. 
Congratulations for the senior music video, Edge of Sanity. We thought that this was such a great music video. It had a great cohesive aesthetic the entire way through. The art direction was incredible. The cinematography was amazing. The editing was great. The song was great. It was a really great um, cohesive film for all of us to watch and we all really enjoyed the journey that you took us through on this music video. So congratulations again to Edge of Sanity. It's late and I'm feeling lonely This life I follow slowly Perfectly wasted I've been going through the motions To keep my name promoted Can't see my reflection It's the eyes I feel all around me The sound of voices that won't speak It's weighing down and I've forgotten just smile without them knowing Just stop the feelings flowing Keep my head up high and then I'm terrified It's my sweet 16 and the party's over Before it even began Unfamiliar faces expecting me to prove all that I am. But I don't even know who that person is. I'm lost in a puzzle that I just don't fit in. Drowning in the pressured rain of expectations and painted fame. It's the change I can't. The award for Best Junior Documentary goes to Burrard View Park by Grace Patterson. And what, what, where are you right now? I am at the park, let's say. Okay. Home. It means different things to different people. To me, home is two things. It's the feeling I get whenever I'm with my cousins. And it's also a place. The one place I feel most at peace. My favorite spot in all of Vancouver, Burrard View Park. The resting place of my childhood. You can do a bunch of different things on this camera. I might even put this on Facebook when I'm older. So many summer nights, my friends and I would come here to toss around the light-up frisbee and run around like we owned the place. It sure felt like it. We did only live across the alley after all. Wasn't the park just an extension to our backyards? The customers were fine, but the knot in my neck is beginning to throb. 
If I have to be reminded once more of what an average life I live I might crack and do something so horrific society could never forgive When I was a kid I always thought one day I'd have an adventure But the older I get the more I feel the pressure to be mature I can't go running around my backyard in a cave and a mask anymore And I can't pretend I'll run away to fight dragons like in the days of yore <laughs> We did spend every spare moment here. Learned how to ride a bike and rollerblade in the tennis courts. And received our first concussions from jumping off the swings and monkey bars too soon. Heads meeting gravel. Playing the old spruce tree, pretending it was everything from a time machine good. to a princess castle. And then there was our jungle gym, our playground, our palace, Careful our not so secret word. secret hideout. You're not gonna die. I would never put your life in danger. <laughs> sort of, maybe. I don't know what's dangerous and what's not, but we're hoping it's not. It's a cool all the books that I'd steal from my dad's collection when I was a child. Eventually, summer would fade to autumn, <laughs> and instead of splashing in the wading pool, we would be jumping in leaves. Or dancing and singing in the rain, inspired by old musicals our parents had influenced us to watch. Those were the best days. We'd go out, sometimes with no coats, getting soaking wet and acting like we were in some fancy Hollywood movie. It didn't matter to us how wet we became because we knew there was always hot chocolate and VHS tapes waiting for us when we got home. Some days I wish I could go back and recreate those moments. We live all those summers we pretended to be adults, and all those springs we gave in to our adolescence. It seems ironic how much time we spent trying to grow up faster, when all we want to do now is turn back time. Nowadays, I go to Broadview to meet up with my friends, and get inspiration for my stories. Sometimes I'll go to read a book, or just to enjoy the view, and have a moment's peace and quiet. When I do find time to visit the road view, the memories come flooding back, and I can be a little kid again. When COVID hit, meeting my friends at the park for socially distanced picnics became second nature. Where else would we go anyway? These days, we don't even think about it. Even after I've moved, the view still feels like it's mine. Like it belongs to us. Meeting at our park is instinctive. Because it is ours, in a way. And to me, Broadview Park is home. Because I love that park. I'm probably going to like it when I'm way older, too. I hope you got, I hope whoever goes likes it. it because it's the best park yeah, in the world. I work at my normal, uninspiring job. The customers were fine, but the knot in my neck is beginning to throb. If I have to be reminded once more of what an average life I live, I might crack and do something so horrific <laughs> Thank you, Broadview! When I was a kid, I always thought one day I'd have an adventure. <laughs> That's a wrap! You want me to wrap? <laughs> yes! I said that's a wrap! Artificial amateurs are <laughs> amazing. Analytically, I assault and amazing. Require yours now, okay. The nominations for Best Senior Documentary are... If a tree falls in the forest and no one is around, does it make a sound? 
The short answer, yes. Yes? I would say yes, it does make a sound. It depends on the definition of sound. Yes, it does make a sound. So the answer to me is maybe. It was really different walking into this year um, and finding out that we were doing a movie. Shooting a movie during a pandemic is definitely hard because the cast can't wear masks. I think the biggest struggle for me and probably a little bit for everybody was just remembering all of the COVID guidelines that we have to follow. <laughs> the award goes to If a Tree Falls by Maya Dustin, Nomi Spivak, Samantha Cohen, and Sean Dempsey. Congratulations to the team of If a Tree Falls for winning Top Senior Documentary. This film tackled a topic that we all ask ourselves and answered it in, in a unique and engaging way. The filmmakers interviewed a diverse range of people, which all added such important viewpoints and demonstrated the filmmakers' clear ability to effectively weave interlocking narratives together through editing. The film contained many beautiful images and above all else, the film had a subtle but effective touch of the director whose presence did not go unnoticed. Great job. If a tree falls in the forest and no one is around, does it make a sound? The short answer, yes. Yes? I would say yes, it does make a sound. It depends on the definition of sound. Yes, it does make a sound. So the answer to me is maybe? My thought would be that it does. Yes. I think it definitely does make a sound. I just wonder, I wonder does it matter? This philosophical question has been around since the 18th century when Bishop George Berkeley first asked it. The answer is still debated, and we were curious as to how different people in our lives would answer it. So the tree falls in the forest, it moves the air and makes air waves. Uh, however, sound is defined as when the air waves hit our eardrum. And so if there's nobody there, it doesn't hit anybody's eardrum, so it doesn't make a sound, but it makes airwaves. Sound means that it has to be interpreted, so it's just an airwave until it hits an eardrum. Even though no one's there, there will be a sound, but the difficulty with the answer is then that we're used to having some kind of proof or evidence. Everything that we have studied, we've been there to witness. Regardless if we were in the actual environment, we've, we've witnessed it. But if I'm not there to experience and, and no one else is there, how do we know what occurs in reality? We don't. Well, there's another view presented that's the idea of solipsism, where nothing else exists but us. In, in, in the book of Genesis, it says that we are made in the image of God. Uh, and so that's how we're privileged. That's where I meant it comes from these uh, Judeo-Christian religions. And uh, uh, to me, this is all silliness. The Bible in itself is a human construction, and so humans telling themselves that they are so important and they're made in the image of God without them, a tree doesn't fall in the forest unless it's witnessed by a human. It's all a bunch of silliness. It might reflect broader tendencies in society, in namely like Western society, to see humans at the center of everything as like the most crucial subject as the only subject actually in a way and everything else is like an object so so yeah I think it could be indicative of a broader kind of anthropocentrism I guess like a human centeredness I believe it's Barclay presents the idea that he, it, he says it in Latin but to be is to be perceived um, which means that material objects cease to exist if there is nobody there to perceive them. Essentially, we are the only thing that creates this world in existing in the way it is. Of 
course, your actions matter. Your actions always, in fact, I almost think they matter more if there's no one there to witness them. Because then it says more about you. Because very often we do things in front of people because society tells us to, or we don't want to be judged, or uh, we're trying to make a point. But the actions that you do on your own when there's no one there to witness, I think says a lot more about who you are as an individual. I think it's interesting because I guess the idea of, yeah, do my actions matter if nobody sees them? Or, or also equally thinking, well, I'm changing my actions because people see them. I think this question is actually more spiritual than um, philosophical because it has to do more with the idea of karma. You know, if you perform an action in the world, what consequences does it have or how does it affect other people? Be a good person whether or not anybody's watching, I'd say. If we look at it from a philosophical per, uh, perspective, if nobody witnesses what I do, this undoubtedly can have many uh, implications. For example, um, it could have an effect on me, and then, you know, through the butterfly effect, could, could affect everything in the world. It's going to have an impact. You know, even if there isn't somebody there to hear it, there's always going to be. Um, impacts, there's going to be changes that happen because of that. Humans, we think we're so important and we're a tiny blip on this massive rock that we're living on in this massive universe we're a part of. And if we can slow down and remember that, um, then we can see that what we do has a, a ripple effect and it, it isn't about us. Your actions matter a lot if no one's there to witness them, in my opinion. I think nature matters whether we're here or not. I have a feeling nature is probably going to outlast human beings as, as well. Um, and that kind of thinking is what's leading to all the trouble on the planet. That humans matter more than nature. And so if we change that thinking, the planet will survive. Who's to say that the tree can't hear its own sound? Or perhaps the other trees can hear it. I mean, it's very likely. Well, it's possible that other trees can hear the sound as well. Just because we can't hear it doesn't mean that it's not happening. We need to think about it in the opposite way. If we make an action, if we do make a choice, do the forests hear it or does the ocean hear it? And the answer is yes. The nominations for Best Senior Animations are It can be real confusing what to do with your waste To store it in these three bins Help save the planet, yay Sometimes we are quite lazy And just throw it on the floor But that is helping no one So what are you waiting for? The award goes to Hot Dog Action Movie by Phoenix London Congratulations to Hot Dog Action Movie for this award. We thought your film was just so creative and fun. We thought your transitions were really well done. Every action sequence was really done. It was super impressive animation. We thought the sound really enhanced 
your film and it was just a joy to watch so congratulations to hot dog action movie The nominations for Best Senior Experimental are I woke up extra early today to ride the bus, the number nine team, that picks me up every Tuesday morning outside the greasy diner on my block. The award goes to Epimetheus by John Gilmore and Sephrin Gerard. Winner in the experimental category goes to John Silmar for Epimetheus. Your film created a very suspenseful experience that was heavily influenced by the sound design and cinematography. Right from the beginning, you invited the viewer in to a very eerie and chilling experience, and the opening shot helped to build that tension. Amazing work and congratulations, John. That's all right for you. 
That's all right, no mama. Any way you do, but that's all right. That's all right. That's all right, no mama. Any way you do. The nominations for Best Senior Thriller, Horror, and Action are. The award goes to Intervention by Peter Zhu. Intervention was filled with so much tension. Um, it should have been called intertension or something. It was just mind blowing how someone could think of that and not only think of it, but portray it in such a beautiful way and suspenseful and just mind blown. Keep writing, please. I want to see more.
ah, 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 ah.
Breach has a very professional feel, especially in lighting and color. This is a visually striking film with acute attention to editing. Well done, Owen Zhang. Chan, you're up. Eagle in position. Chat. Tune it out. Again. Pizza? Yo? You got the wrong place, pal. False alarm. Captain, you're acquiring data position. Approve. Go, go. All clear. It's empty. No Scorpio.
The nominations for Best Senior Narrative Drama are... The thing is, for me, it doesn't go back to normal. I wake up and I'm still scared of people, of how they look at me, of how complicated they are, how messy, how big, how loud the rest of the world is. It drowns me out. How'd you do it? How'd you keep on moving? Passion. You have to have passion. You have to have something in your life which gives you meaning. The latest on this police hunt for this crazy guy in the woods? These big city cops don't have a clue. <laughs> Not the faintest. Keep your eyes open for strange behavior. Let the authorities know. <laughs> like Smith and Wesson. The award goes to Calamity Jane by Claire Dooley. Congratulations to the team of Calamity Jane for winning Top Senior Narrative Drama. This film did an amazing job at highlighting the emotional undertones of the film through their skilled use of lighting, cinematography, and editing. The writing was compelling and engaging, and the filmmakers utilized various experimental and expressionistic techniques to create a unique viewing experience. Amazing job. When dreaming, your brain is very active. The limbic system is in control of the fear you feel and why you feel it. However, your frontal lobes are especially inactive during sleep, leaving you unable to judge whether or not that fear is rational. And then the dream ends and you wake up and everything is supposed to go back to normal. The thing is, for me, it doesn't go back to normal. I wake up and I'm still scared of people, of how they look at me, of how complicated they are, how messy, how big, how loud the rest of the world is. It drowns me out. Yeah. All right, I'll see you. Bye. Bye. Hey. Can I borrow five bucks? What? Uh, can I borrow five bucks for food? Um, Come on, I'll pay you back. I promise I'm starving. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks. Hey, uh, what's your name again? Sorry, I didn't ask before I took your money. It's Jane. Cool, I'm Francis. What do you have after this? French. Want a sip? I miss swing sets. Why? Have you not been on one in a while? Yeah. I didn't even notice until now. Weird. Do you like it? Yes. You look disgusting. Are you okay? Yeah, I just thought I saw something. Ready? 
Benny's room. How do you feel? Weird. How so? Like I want to die. Mm, it wasn't that bad. You just passed out. Not like we had to call your mom or anything. Yeah, I guess. Do you ever just feel so tired of yourself? Always. Did I ruin your night? No, we were fine. It wasn't that great to be with. What happened anyways? I just get like that sometimes. What do you mean? Like, I see stuff and it freaks me out. You see stuff like you hallucinate? Yeah, I guess. Why? I'm just afraid. Of what? People. Are you afraid of me? No, I'm not. I'm afraid of you. When we fall in love, blood flow increases to the pleasure center of the brain, which causes that blushing, sweating, pounding feeling of euphoria. Incidentally, the same area of the brain controls obsessive compulsive behaviors. Love also relieves pain. It causes the same feeling in your brain as snorting a light of coke. You experience similar feelings of withdrawal too. Every time she walks away from you, you feel yourself dim just a little bit. It's like waking up in an empty bed. It's like drinking a glass of water and still feeling thirsty, or staying in a hot bath for so long that it becomes cold, and when you get out, you feel gently abandoned and so, so lonely. Friendship isn't quite what I expected it to be. Combinatorial mathematics. I love Nyanese Matt Damon. Me too. Oh, it's my mom. Do you want me to pause it? No, it's fine. Hey, mom. Yeah. Okay. See you in a bit. Love you. Bye. Um, I have to go now. You're gonna miss the best part. I know, but my mom wants me home. Okay, fine. Bye, I guess. See ya. Hey, I need to talk to you. What is it? I'm moving away. My mom told me last night. Where? Toronto. She got a job there. When are you leaving? Next week. I'll miss you. I'll miss you too. This sucks. I know. When you're 16, the whole world seems to live and die in seconds. 
every single little thing that happens feels like it's all there is. I fell in love with this girl recently, and now she has to leave. It's like we just ran into each other out of nowhere, out of the dark, and clung to each other tight till one of us had to leave again. I used to be really, really shy, and because of that, I was really, really lonely. Like, the kind of lonely that makes you feel sick. But now I know that that just doesn't matter, because that feeling of closeness exists out there somewhere. Even if I don't have it anymore. And it always will. And that's all there is. Hey, Laurie. You see that, Annie? I take the long way home from your house Cause you know I like the exercise And I watch you turn your back Would you look at how the time is flying? The nominations for Best Junior Narrative are Due to the high number of COVID-19 cases in the Fraser Health region, we are being forced to close school. No, tu n'as pas la permission. Si tu y vas, j'appelle la police. I was not happy with my life. I'm not pretty. I'm not skinny. I'm not popular. I need to change. I think she's trying to play the guitar. Pam, Percy, Peter, and Peyton played together, as most children do. Swapping stories, telling secrets, picnicking in the park. They were naive and innocent. Peyton loved Pam, of course, but wanted to play with Peter. The award goes to Till Morning by Taya Friesen. I was personally blown away with the talent that I saw from the filmmakers of Till Morning. It, it wasn't even just in its own category, it goes beyond that. It, it like transcends all filmmaking I've seen today in terms of ideas and skill in technology, just overall fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> On the first day, Pam, Percy, Peter, and Peyton played together, as most children do. Swapping stories, telling secrets, picnicking in the park. They were naive and innocent. Peyton loved Pam, of course, but wanted to play with Peter. Peter was often preoccupied. Hand against cheek. Peyton grew jealous of her friend's affections. As the fog rolled in, they packed up their things and left the park behind. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your
your host, Robert Evans. On the second day, their radios bore grim news of the world. Early this morning, southwest London was bombed by the Nazis. They packed their bags. is planning a mass evacuation of citizens, since it looks as though this battle has only just begun. Before the children fled to safety. working tirelessly to protect our home from the threat of full-blown... The day grew grim and cold as they trudged through the forest. And so, Pam, Percy, Peter, and Peyton made their way to the cabin in the woods. It was a dreary place, covered in dust and grime, but safer than home. The children unpacked what few things they had in a useless attempt to make something seem familiar. That night was restless for all. The wind sounded like howling and the house creaked as if it were a living creature. Peyton dreamt of a stranger in a dark coat, his face covered by the brim of his hat. He held out his hand and told her that he could take her far away, but only if she was alone. The offer was tempting, but the girl refused. The stranger said he would be waiting. On the third day, the shack seemed smaller than before, cramped, but not cozy, at least not for some. They cleaned by the stream while Percy gathered kindling. The girls dressed their dolls and played together after the chores were finished. Peyton wondered for a moment where the boys had run off to. Pam said that Peter was at the stream while Percy tended to the garden. She lied. Their smiles made Peyton's blood boil. That afternoon, they went for a walk. Peyton was worried for her friends. Perhaps, said Peyton to her dear friend Pam. We should do something. It can't be safe for them out there. I'm only concerned for their health. Pam turned to face her. I don't understand, Pam said slowly. Why you worry so often about our friends. Peter and Percy can take care of themselves. God knows Peter needs a break from you constantly assessing over his every move. She wasn't quite out of earshot. That night, Peyton dreamt of the man again. But this time, she took his offer. On the fourth day, Pam's bed was cold and empty. The children spoke in hushed voices about her disappearance. The wind was harsh, however, and the days were short and cold. The dangers that came with leaving were far too great. They hoped that their dear friend would be back shortly. It was a solemn day. That evening, Percy and Peter sat together on the front step. They talked about all sorts of things. For the first time, it felt like home. On the fifth day, Peter and Peyton were the only two left. Peyton gave Peter a moment to mourn alone. It was then that he found a letter. Scrawled in shaky black ink were four words. You have till morning. The river ran red, and it was then that he knew. That night, he stared into the eyes of the friend he knew so well, and nothing stared back. I know what you did. The boy said, his voice shaking. Peyton cocked her head to the side. Whatever do you mean? She asked, moving towards him. His eyes widened with fear. Pam, Percy, Peyton. We both know you're sick. Please, just listen. He placed his hand on her arm, pleading. I know you're still in there. Peyton smiled sadly. We both know I'm not. On the sixth day, 
Peyton waited. The stranger didn't come. She hoped he would keep his promise and come back someday. After all, by morning, she was alone. Congratulations, Rock On, for the Junior Craft Award for Sound Design. Our team was so amazed by how much intricate work you did in your foley, um, how much work you did with like, each little footstep for the puppets. We also want to give a huge shout out to your set design and world building for this film. We just thought the entire film was super creative, super fun, and congratulations again on this award. The award for Best Actor in the Junior category goes to Christine Gao from Princess Painces in a film that tackles the toxic beauty standards put on uh, young people in our society. Uh, Christine's performance was subtle, unique, and uh, full of humor, which really took us through the whole arc of the story, and it was really well done. So congratulations, Christine Gao, and great work. The nominations for Best Long Form Video are... All right, Haley, we're gonna go over last night one more time. The truth this time, all right? We're tired of beating around the bush, as I'm sure you are. I've been telling you the truth. I don't know what else you want me to say. Do you think the moon gets on me? The award goes to The Sunday Cycle by Jane Bao. Congratulations to the team of The Sunday Cycle for winning top long form. These filmmakers undertook the difficult task of managing an entire ensemble cast and crew as high school students and succeeded. The film felt cohesive and professional with all technical aspects serving as well thought out and meaningful additions to the narrative. To top it all off, Impressive writing drove the story in an engaging way. Great job. I'm here every Sunday. Summer, winter, Everything in between. They seem to only exist on Sundays. That's Fred Rick. Fred Rick Kai. He's a quaint man who doesn't often speak his mind, but will almost always show it. He seems permanently cross, and maybe it's because he was given three first names instead of your typical first and last. Hey, 
just a single 45 minute cycle, please. Uh, 175. Thanks. Here you go. Thank you. He likes online gambling games. Sometimes it would be Scrabble, then Rummy, Craps, Blackjack, Solitaire. Most of the time he wins, but on days when he has rotten luck, he makes sure others have it too. Hey, that's just a 45 minute cycle, please. Okay, 475. Just a, no, just a 45. No, 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 it's 475. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. What, you want for free? No. Thank you. He's very thankful that the laundromat has not been robbed once in 11 years. He happens to also be at the master's level in Qigong. He is very proud of both. Hi! How are you? Good. So good to see you! I hear these ones call each other Celeste and Kate. That one's Celeste. Look what Ken bought me. Isn't he such a sweetie? Isn't it fabulous? You're so lucky. I don't think Jason's ever set foot in a Michael Kors before. You better hold on to that one, Celeste. And I'm talking about the gems and the man. <laughs> Even though her repulsive name causes the bile to rise in my throat, Kitty seems nice. She is pretty and messy and troubled. In our first interaction, four Sundays ago, she tripped and let her basket of socks and underwear go flying all over the linoleum. I almost offered to help her pick it up, but that's Celeste, who seems to know her well and always wants to do everything she had it under control. Looking back, it is probably best that I didn't, because we all live and breathe on different planets here. It would have been far too much to travel. She manages a soccer team, and I've seen her more times than anyone else. Before her necklace screamed out her identity to the entire world, that jacket was her name. So to me, she was the acid wash woman. She used to read these out loud to herself all the time, and I don't think she would have stopped if Kitty hadn't started accompanying her. Ugh, the people these days! The man slumped across from me resembles a sewer rat, attempting to blend in at a dinner party. It's almost as if he's listening to music that isn't actually playing, craning his brain to and ears to drink up the sound of some faraway foreign symphony. He's elegant in a way, I guess, if you took elegant and soaked it in a dirty river for a week. I bet that's his load over at machine number four. So do we have any race at home? Uh, I'm pretty sure we ran out the other day. Okay, I guess we'll have to stop by at a store and um, we need tea as well. Sid? Rent's due in a week, right? Because we're still 250 short. Oh, it's that time already. We'll just put it on our visa. It's what credit cards are for anyway, right? However, we can make money up here. Edna is fretful and she's always wearing too many colors. With all her notes and hair and general disposition, she reminds me a lot of my great aunt Helen. Well, except for the fact that my great aunt Helen has a giant collection of erotic origami. I'd like to hope that she's the only one in the world who does. That's Pablo, or at least I've convinced myself. 
He always looked like a Pablo from the first Sunday I saw him. I sometimes wonder about the places all those keys open doors to. There must be at least 30. Okay. What was the man's name again? Mm. I'm Kai. I'm Benny, by the way. Kitty. So he isn't named Pablo. Care for a mint? What about you? You know him? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, it's a shame. You know, I've, I can say I, I've barely spoken a few words with that guy. I know his name from the awards, well, you know, the ones. Well, we should probably get going. Yeah, um, bye. Bye. All right. Bye. 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 See ya. Yeah, same with us. You got in your last load, Celeste? Mm-hmm. All set. Later, guys, okay? Take care. Yeah, you too. Take care. Well, uh, take it easy, man. Uh, what did you say you recall? I guess I never said. My name is Max. Okay, so goodbye for now, Max. The people at the laundromat remind me a lot of Pablo. I mean, Benny's keys. Those keys must get tired after being attached to one another for so long. But despite being so close together, none of them know where the others have been. Secret rooms, hidden worlds, alternate dimensions. Broom closet key would not dare tell a car key its secrets and vice versa. I often think about the people at the laundromat as my almost acquaintances, and I might only exist on Sundays to them just the same. They're like cut up mosaic people in my head. I only see fragments of them, maybe the less shiny ones. And I'd like to think good riddance, and I'd like to think that I'm more than just a sliver of Sunday glass to them, but I suppose I'm not.
The award for best cinematography in the senior category goes to A Happy Ending by Lucas Nasu Nielsen. Uh, the cinematography in this film adds new layers of effect and meaning to the narrative. Uh, the shots are not just well composed aesthetically, but they're really emotionally significant. Um, and the way the shots are framed, they don't just capture the characters or the spaces, but most importantly, it captures the relationship between those and their significance in the narrative. Uh, it's the kind of film that you can turn off the sound and you would understand and feel the story shot by shot. Uh, so really well done by uh, Lucas Nasu Nielsen of A Happy Ending. Congratulations. Yes? I'm bored. Can you tell me a story? Okay. Well, there was this one time. It was my senior year of high school. A tough time in my life. My grades weren't looking too good. My girlfriend had just dumped me. And your grandma was sick at the time. But I had some good friends. Yo, man, what's up? You, uh, finished the reading yet for English? Nah, I'll just read the summary, man. I don't feel like reading Moby Dick. My dad's been putting a lot of pressure on me to keep my grades up. With my mom in the hospital, I've been having to work two extra shifts. And with balancing my personal life, man, it's just overwhelming, you know? True. But I'll take an F any day over having to read about that stupid whale. <laughs> Yo, man, is that banana? Yeah, man, it's the best flavor. Nah, man, that's whack. Like, no one even likes banana. Man, what do you mean? They wouldn't sell it if nobody liked it. I mean, true, but still, like, any tropical flavor, like, hey! Dad, is this story gonna get any better? Don't worry, it's just getting started. Yo, man, it's, it's getting kind of late. I, I think I'm gonna head back. All right, man. I gotta go finish reading Moby Dick anyways. <laughs> yeah, man, all right. Yeah, the story's getting really sad. Don't worry, it has a happy ending. I promise. Yo, man. Jesus, are you okay? Dude, who did this to you? I don't know what to do, man. About what? About everything. What are you talking about? Life. It's just, it's too much right now. 
because my mom's sick, I'm working extra shifts. Our bikes just got stolen. And Moby freaking dick. Dude, you're kind of freaking me out right now. What if nothing gets better? Life just keeps kicking me down. It's like, it's like a constant sequence of closing doors with no end in sight. Hey, um, I'm sorry about your mom. Sometimes it's just too much, you know? I'm sure she's gonna be all right, man. Okay, you're right. But you know life is gonna get better, even if it doesn't feel that way. And yeah, it might be a sequence of closing doors, but that's not a bad thing. It just means that we're getting older and wiser and gaining new experiences. <laughs> Jesus, this is not what I expected my Friday night to be like. <laughs> you know what I do when I'm having a really bad day? I'm stressed out. Or I'm just worried about my mom. I imagine myself 20 years from now telling my own kids stories about my life. I'm happy and successful, and I tell her how everything worked out in the end. And when I do that, I know that everything's going to be all right. It has to be. But it's fake. Yeah, well, it makes me feel better. Congratulations to the team of the Big Boo Hoo for winning top senior production design. This group of students tackled a 50s era period piece and handled it exceptionally well, especially considering the time constraints that often come along with student filmmaking. This task was no doubt a big undertaking, but it paid off immensely. The team curated authentic and detailed costuming for a very large cast and decorated many sets for the 30 minute film and the hard work and professionalism was clear to our panel of judges. Amazing work. Winner for Best Senior Screenplay goes to Abby White for Heliocentric. The exploration of the two main characters was written beautifully. The whole story arc of ending where you began tied the film together nicely and created this beautiful tension between the two characters. To further explore the relationship dynamic, you use that tension, and which helped to push the narrative to the end, leaving the viewer wanting more. Excellent work, Abby, and congratulations. Do you think the moon gets lonely? It's interesting to think that someone could be the biggest part of our lives, but we could be the smallest part of theirs, isn't it? Luna, 
It's way too early for this. It's 12 p.m. <laughs> I guess. But isn't it enough to enjoy each other's companies without the complexity of thoughts? Yeah, I suppose it is. <laughs> Oh, are you leaving? Yeah. You coming? I can walk you home. Oh, uh, here. Aww. Is this me? Thanks, Luna. Bye. <laughs> Why do you always make me tea? What, do you not enjoy it? There's nothing in this world that I enjoy more. What you reading there, Lulu? Uh, just an old book. Right. You and your old books. Where to get it from this? There's this bookstore I go to. It's kind of the place I go to when I need an escape, I guess. Need any help? Yeah, sure. It's just my necklace. You look really pretty today, Luna. Are you coming over later? Uh, I'm not sure why. I don't know, I just wanted to talk to you about something. Well, I guess us to be specific. Nothing bad though, I just wanted to, you know, talk. Right. <laughs> um, well, maybe we could go to the park tomorrow evening, you know? That, yeah, yeah, that should be fine. Okay. If you need to talk about it now, that's okay. It's fine, you probably owe the plans anyways. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Well, clearly it's not nothing if you said it. You have all these other friends, and don't get me wrong, I'm happy for you. It's just, I'm not sure where I fit into your universe. Luna, don't be stupid. You're very important to me. Come on, Lulu. I'd hate to leave you out here all alone. Hi, your mom let me in. Are you ready? Ready for? I thought we were going to the park. It was your idea. Oh. Yeah, yeah, totally. <sighs> it's fine if you forgot, we could just do it another time. No, it's okay, just give me like, give me Give me like five, five minutes and we can still go, okay? I don't know why it's such a big deal. Because you forgot about me, once again. Luna, don't be so dramatic, okay? I just, I said give me literally a couple of minutes and we can still go. I still don't know how you forgot when we just talked yesterday. I don't know why you're getting so worked up. It's not like it hasn't happened before. Well, yeah, exactly my point.
There. Are we going or what? Why would the moon get lonely? It's just a floating rock. Are you still upset? Look, if you have something to say, can you please just say it for once? Luna. Luna, I get it that you're quiet. It's just... I thought maybe after being friends for this long, you could at least, I don't know, trust me? Yeah, I do trust you, Amelia. But you just, you're never there when I need to talk to you. I try to be there, Luna. What does it matter? You're, you're my closest friend anyway. Yeah, friend. Maybe I wanted to be more than friends. Haven't you figured it out by now? I like you, Elia. But you just don't seem to care about me as much as I care about you. There's always other people. I'm always the second option, and then you have the audacity to tell me I'm your closest friend? You like me? I like you too, Luna. What, you're not gonna say anything? I loved you, but this is not the good kind of love anymore. You know how we always joked around about how we're the sun and the moon? Maybe we are. You're bright and warm. You lure people in. Everything spins around you. Your life in itself. Yet the second I got too close, it got hurt. Maybe I am. solitude. We aren't meant to exist together. You're always gone and every time I finally think I've caught up to you, I'm left alone chasing you through the sky. I'm done chasing you, Ilya. I'm sorry. Well, maybe it's not just me. I mean, maybe you didn't love me enough, and that's why I had to look to other people, you know? And why now? Why didn't you say anything before? I tried. Didn't know how. Guess I was too scared. <laughs> what now? There's anything here for us but chaos. Just some. Can you just stay a little longer? We, we don't have to talk, just. Stay. Sunset's pretty today.
Long form has so many strong entries this year. It was really tough to stand out, but one of those films that really caught the judges' eyes is I Saw Her by Melody David, Wapa Sir, Bryson Lamar, and Aidan Gibbons. This film has a great story, cinematography, editing, sound design, and acting. Really a magical chemistry of filmmaking. Great job. See guys, they got missing posters up everywhere. Who would miss her anyway? Aren't you guys scared they're gonna find out? Well, they will find out if you keep talking about it. Oh, I like this party. This party is okay. Why is she even here? It's kind of weird having her here. I haven't talked to her in a while. I felt bad, okay? She doesn't have anyone after you broke up with her. I know. I didn't mean for it to turn out like this. Come on, you didn't need her anyway. Here, I'll grab her a drink. in the bathroom and in the hallway. You're just being paranoid. Yeah, dude, that's just weird. Hello? You deleted my number. I'm offended. May? You good? I saw her too. What? May. She was here. Uh, so I'm not crazy. Let's go find Valerie and see if she's seen her too. You guys are full of shit. Look, I saw her first and no one believed me. Now look at Blake. It's not every day you see the ghost of your dead ex. I think this means something. It means you're delusional. Ghosts aren't real. I'm going home. It's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. 
This is where I break yours. Is May okay? She wasn't feeling that great from all the drinks. She went out to go get some fresh air. I'm gonna go check on her. Guys, she passed out. She's not passed out. She's dead. Why aren't you freaking out? We need to hide the body. What? I don't know. We should call the police. This is your party, your alcohol. We're underage. You're at fault here. Do you want to get locked up? Uh, I, I... Get her in the back of your car. I know a place we can take her. Don't you feel it's kind of convenient that right as we're starting to see May again, Blake isn't showing up to school? Stop overreacting. He's probably just sick. Well, I can't help it. Don't you feel guilty for what we did? We didn't do anything. She did that to herself. Sam's party was crazy. Isn't it awful what happened to May? Yeah, uh, I hope they find her soon. Yeah, totally. Get rid of me that easy. I have an idea. What are you doing? This will be funny. Hi, May. Want another drink? Yeah, sure. Thanks.
Why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? Answer me. It was a joke. You weren't supposed to die. I've never done anything to you. You've always had it out for me. Look at you always playing the victim. Turn around. This didn't have to happen, you know. Why didn't you help me? Now all your friends are dead and you're alone. I tried. I wanted to. Valerie took control. You're your own person. You don't have to obey her every move. Why'd you let her do that to me? I swear I didn't know. I thought it was alcohol poisoning. She wanted you to do her dirty work. She wanted me dead. I should have known. I wish I could take this all back. I know. I'm not going to kill you. You're going to live with this for the rest of your life. She's not dead yet, but she will be. Help her like you didn't help me. The nominations for Best Junior Animation are... I have the clearest and most memories in this room. It was where the picture of young Queen Elizabeth hung on the left wall. I remember running up to the window and watching the trees. I remember the room was kind of magical. I don't know why, I had so many short memories here. The award goes to Memories by Erica Hicks. Winner in the Junior Animation category goes to Erica Nakazawa Hicks for Memories. Memories was a beautiful telling of how we remember places we once visited. The stunning animation helped to define the memories that were forgotten and the ones that were still prominent. Beautiful work, Erica, and congratulations. <music> stores and there weren't even a lot of houses. Back then, the house was on the outskirts of town and surrounded by farms. This is the house I always went to in the winter when I was younger. I haven't been to the house in about eight years so my memory is pretty foggy. The sun room is a place I remember a lot from. It's the first thing I always saw when I walked into the house. I don't remember a lot from this room. Only the old TV and the chest of something beside it. Like the living room, there is almost nothing I remember. It was a very small kitchen. Was an entrance to the backyard. I've never been down to the basement. I always thought there was a monster living down there when I was a kid.
memories get, the more distant and unreal they become. They almost turn into dreams. The nominations for Best Senior Narrative Comedy are... family room. Not in this case. Maybe you could call it the family tomb. At least ten people were buried under these floors. Eerie, isn't it? Award goes to Checked Out by Sadie Edney. Congratulations to the team of Checked Out for winning top film at this year's BC Student Film Festival. Our judging panel was so blown away by the work of this incredible project. From beautiful cinematography, subtle yet impactful acting, and unique methods of storytelling, Checked Out told a story in a way that few films managed to do with heart and soul. This, of course, was spearheaded by a director that had a clear vision for their film and made the overall viewing experience delicate and wonderful. Well done. Those aren't all for me. They're for my cat. He's dying of AIDS. Your cat has AIDS? AIDS. Not, gay, not gay AIDS, like oh. cat AIDS. Gay, gay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. No. That, that was sad. All right. And they'll be uh, 1.30? Yeah. Thanks. Um, two, two, three, three. Have a pen. What? Oh, oh, um, uh, which, which one? Don't 
you think it's weird that Punk Boy comes into the store every weekend and only ever buys milk? I mean, Rollerblade Guy comes in every week and only buys beef jerky, so... No. Why are you looking at me like that? What are you doing? I think he likes you. Who? Punk Boy. No. No. What? No. Then why is he always smiling at you? He never smiles yes, at you. Yes, he me. does. Like, no, all he the time. When? Yeah, all... You should talk to him. I can't do that. Why? No. Because I can't do that. What's the worst that could happen? I don't know. I just can't do that. How <laughs> are you ever going to change if you always do the same things? Okay? Okay? No. Say okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 I haven't seen Beef Jerky Man yet this weekend. That's weird. I know. I get kind of worried about him sometimes. You know what I mean? Not really. Well, he's always on those rollerblades. Like, we don't know if... Okay, he's right there. Just say something. That would be really easy. Dottie, shut, no. shut up. Listen, just do it. Just do it. Just say something. Just say something. Okay. Hi, welcome! The, um, 2.30, please? Why do you always drink so much milk? I'm balking up for the pit. What? The pit? Uh, would you want to come to a show with me tomorrow night? That's my name and number. Thank you. Oh, for that? Oh my god, that went so much better than I expected. Oh my god, no, I'm so excited for you. This is so good. Uh, okay. Oh, Harriet, you look amazing. Is that eyeliner on your cheek? Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of eyeliner. Okay, well, I like it like this, so. Are you gonna go hang out with your boyfriend? Okay, that's it. Everybody out. Please go. Uh, please, please, I please never go. thought she would have go. a date. Okay, well, I heard that. Yeah, so, you know. Yep. It was kind of a long story, but I met these guys at the skate park. What are you doing? Nayal wants to know what her funeral is going to look like. The skate bowl is the deepest place underground where we don't have to dig an actual hole. Well, if you guys aren't skating, maybe you can turn down your music and get out of the way. Maybe you can calm down, bro. I think you should try it. You look like you need a reality check. <laughs> can you turn down your music? I ask you politely and you make me, it. bitch. He's probably just angry that you embarrassed him in front of his 14-year-old friends. Yeah, okay, let's just... Let's... Do you hear that? Show's over, kids. Gotta get out. Can't you hear them? They're gonna kill us. It's not really my problem. Okay, can, can I at least have five minutes to go grab my jacket? Please. Fine. Thank you. Five minutes. Um, I didn't see a back door see or anything. Surrender! 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 Oh, I can just I can just run outside and get and distract them and you can get away. What's, no, no, no. Surrender! Surrender! 
Hey, mom. Hi. Um. Yeah. So, yeah. Don't make too much of a big deal about this or anything. Um. It's just. Yeah. I might need a little bit of help. Yeah. Told me you guys met at the corner store. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. Yep. Buys a lot of milk. <laughs> I think I'm gonna turn on the radio. Okay. I'm so low. I've read all your Thank you so much for watching this year's BC Student Film Festival. Thank you to all the filmmakers, their teachers, the BCSFF committee members, and this year's judging panel. All the best to you all. Good night.